in the beginning, there was the Word. And the Word was shared. For the exchange of information between the early men of science depended, for the most part, on face-to-face -face contact. Since there were relatively few people active in any scientific field, they could get together and talk over their work. One, two, three. As the scientific community grew in size and activity all around the world, the word was put to paper. Letters that passed back and forth between scientists became the medium of information exchange. Of course, writing letters was time consuming. To share information with two or three dozen scientists meant having to write two or three dozen letters. So it was no wonder that scientists hailed the emergence of the printing press, because now they could write a paper once and have hundreds of people read it. All that remained was for someone to collect a group of scientific papers, print a cover, and they would create a journal. And sure enough, in the middle 1600s, the first scientific journals were published. The Journal des Savants in Paris. Ceci, c'est très bien. And Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society in London. By Jove, this is splendid indeed. It was a popular idea. And by the middle of the 18th century, there were 10 journals being published. Through regular use of the journals, scientists found they could complete their work more quickly. Eureka! Keep up with new developments. <laughs> Locate colleagues with similar interests. Dobry den, pane doktore. Right. Prevent duplication of research. And monitor the competition. When there were only a few journals, keeping up with new articles was easy. When there were only a few journals, keeping up with new articles was easy. Even a literature search that covered several years could be made in short order from individual collections of journals. But the number of journals continued to grow to hundreds, to thousands, to tens of thousands from most of the countries of the world. Classifying articles for retrieval became slow and imprecise. To complicate things, researchers needed information from many related disciplines to solve new problems. Even with abstracts and indexes, making full use of the journal literature wasn't easy anymore. Keeping up with newly published articles was rapidly becoming impractical. Mama! And searching back even a few years through the literature was almost impossible. Things continued to get worse until 1961, when a new idea was hatched. The Institute for Scientific Information was born. The fledgling organization took a good look at the literature and at the way it was really used. It felt that with the right kind of innovation, it could deliver the right information into the right hands at the right time at minimum expense and inconvenience. The first step was to develop a practical database that encompassed a manageable percentage of the world's scientific literature. Although there are about 50,000 journals being published throughout the world, the significant articles are found in only a small percentage of them. In fact, less than 1,000 scientific journals account for over 90% of the important articles in science and technology. This phenomenon is based on Bradford's law. In practical terms, this means that truly comprehensive information services can be produced rapidly and efficiently from a carefully selected portion of the world's journal literature. Another important step was to apply to this database an indexing technique that had never been used for the scientific literature. Called citation indexing, this technique overcomes many of the limitations of conventional indexing systems. It is based on the premise that an author's reference to a previous publication indicates a subject relationship between the two. These references are commonly called citations. 
and are listed in the bibliography of the work. Current publications that refer to the same previous publication usually have subject relationships with each other. Applying these relationships, citation indexing draws together related items. Citation indexing is a key to the effectiveness of many of the ISI information services. From a modest beginning, the Institute for Scientific 